Hello folks, this is Jamie with a selection of tips for RimWorld 1.0, aimed at people who have played it before but not in the last few months. See, it all looks very familiar, but there were loads of small changes added in the last update before 1.0, along with stuff such as water mills. So let's get going, and remember that I do have loads of RimWorld Let's Plays to enjoy here on Randomised User, so do check them out and consider subbing for coverage of all the best indie games around. First tip is to get to know the user interface. It looks the same at first glance, but there is a new tab, plus a lot of things that appear buried in the menus that are easy to miss. Most obviously, you can now easily locate all wild animals on the map using the new wildlife tab. Just click on the name of an animal to zoom straight there. Best of all, you can instantly decide to hunt or tame them without ever even seeing them. Also, if you're the sort of person who dismisses a message only to need it again in the future, there's a new archive for your messages, which can be found here in the History tab. A useful feature you might never notice is that if you have a particularly important or time-sensitive workstation bill, you can now assign it to a particular colonist, say, the one with the highest relevant skill. Now I'm trying not to just list all the new things here, but another useful thing is that you can now relocate a lot more stuff instead of having to destroy the original. Next tip, make sure your stockpiles are fully indoors to stop things deteriorating. You used to be able to leave stuff outside, build a couple of blocks of walls, then put a roof overhead. It was a very cheap way of stopping your stuff deteriorating, but that no longer works. Next, rivers are a lot more important and interesting in RimWorld 1.0, so choose a map with a river if you want a modest extra challenge, plus access to a new type of power in the form of a water mill. Water mills are less powerful than solar, but they do run 24 hours a day. And just watch out for the blue exclusion zone, which stops you putting water mills too close together. Rivers add a little extra challenge because colonists are now unhappy when they have to wade through water. Luckily, you can build bridges to combat this, something you used to need mods for. You can now lay power cables across rivers using the new insulated cable type, but it costs more to build and can't be built in deeper water. So here's a clever tip. Build a bridge, then run normal power cables over that. In fact, you can build most things on top of bridges. Uh, just don't try it with a water mill. Next, make sure you build a variety of joy sources, because colonists now get bored of doing the same recreation over and over. Oh yeah, it's been renamed Recreation. To satisfy the need for dexterity style play, you can build a horseshoe pin, hoopstone ring, or billiards table. For cerebral play, you'll need to build a chess or poker table. A social recreation will be automatic, provided that you have a table and chair. And you don't need to do anything special for them to do meditative recreation, they'll just pray or go for walks on their own. If your colonists have high expectations for recreation, consider producing your own chocolate. Uh, just be aware that it's not really viable early on. You'll need to research the new trees research, then the coca trees research, and you'll also have to have high growing skills. Next, if you make mountain bases but didn't like how colonists found the worlds to be ugly, use the smooth surface order, which will flip the beauty level from minus two to one. Uh, this is quite a slow process, however, so you may need to be selective about which rooms to do first. Meanwhile, caravans have had a few quality of life improvements, which may impact your planning. Most interestingly, you don't need to take quite as much food, because caravans will forage for a small amount en route. Also, the planning interface is slightly different and more helpful. Best of all, note how you no longer have to pick a compass direction for your caravan to leave by. Now, you pick your entire route before leaving the map. Next, handling animals is a bit tougher in 1.0 because animals now lose training over time, which seems to be designed to penalise players for getting too powerful with large packs of killer, tame animals. If you want to maintain such a large pack, you'll probably need a well-trained colonist dedicated entirely to animal handling. Okay, just to finish, I'll just run through a couple of extra things that you should know. Uh, factions have been tweaked heavily, and it's now more important now to have good relations. Uh, to bump up the numbers, you can offer gifts to factions in the trade interface. Armour has been heavily overhauled, and should be a research priority for those with a combative approach. Uh, the ability to craft plate armour is a literal lifesaver. You'll need to develop a few more ideas to deal with raids. Uh, sometimes raiders will enter at multiple points at once, for instance. You can rename people's designation as well as their name, so you can describe your colonists a bit better. Maybe call your melee person Punchy Poo. You can now restrict what type of food people eat, including prisoners, on the Assign tab. Okay, that's it. 
Uh, there's a million other things, but this is what I've noticed so far with the limited time I've had playing with the various unstable builds. Uh, so do check out my Patreon if you've enjoyed this video. The more support I get, the more interesting stuff I can make for you.